Hello, and welcome to this month's Ask Nice series. I'm Bonnie Murray, and I'm coming to you from the Digital Learning Network studios here at NASA Langley Research Center. And I have with me Monica Barnes, who is the NASA Innovations and Climate Education Project Manager. So I'll let you say hello, Monica. Thank you, Bonnie. I'm very excited that you guys are tuned in today to watch this series. Um, uh, educational professional development series for the NASA Innovations in Climate Education. I appreciate you taking time to be with us today and I know that you're going to learn a lot uh, from tuning in and so I'm very excited about Bonnie um, uh, being able to put this series together uh, for you and we're excited and I hope you guys have a great holiday. Thank you, Monica. Thanks. And yes, we are very glad that you can be here today. This is a series, for those of you who are new, this series meets the third Thursday of every month, and we'll take an hour and present some content information to strengthen your knowledge of Earth system science, and then we'll pre present some resources that have been developed by the NASA Innovations in Climate Education, or NICE project. We can just refer to it as NICE from now on since we've said it several times. Um, so we'll present some resources there that you can plug right into your classroom. Um, so let me start by introducing some of the people that we have here and connected. I've already introduced Monica to you. We have two sites connected. One is Mecklenburg Public Schools that will be joining us from the Lake Country Distance Education Center in Clarksville, Virginia. And uh, we'll say hi to them. Hello out there. I believe I see Bill so far and they're gathering in that room now. Hello, and hello. Yeah, we're still getting people coming in so we're not completely here that's yet. great. And Bob McKay is out there as well, so we thank you for joining us. Sure. And then we also have Dana, and Dana is out at the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research. So hello to Dana. I know there are teachers gathering there as well, and that's over in Danville, Virginia. Yes. So let me start. There's Dana. Hello, Dana. Yes. So let me start by saying I know I was emailing with uh, several individuals this week, so now you can see what it looks like to be connected in the Hangout, so if that's something that interests you, um, you'll be able to communicate with us during the Hangout and email me afterwards and you can let me know. So speaking of introducing um, or communicating during the Hangout, there are two ways. One is to use the comment bar that's underneath your uh, YouTube player. The other is to use Twitter and put hashtag AskNice within the tweet and we'll receive those questions and try to answer them during the Hangout. So moving along with people that I need to introduce, um, if you joined us last month you'll remember that Marilei Colin Robles was with us and she is here again. She'll be joining us a little later in the broadcast to bring you the NASA moment with some NASA resources specific to this topic but not necessarily developed by the NICE project. So we'll expand to the greater bank of NASA resources as well. And then our presenters for today are NICE project, uh, project investigators. They're awardees of the NICE uh, funding and they are Eugene Metzger and whoops excuse me Eugene Cordera and Ellen Metzger there you are okay I was hoping your your box would come up they're coming from San Jose State University so hi Jean and Ellen hello nice to be here hello. so they're out on the west coast joining us and their project is called Green Ninja a climate action superhero so I'm gonna let them present some information to you again both on content information, strengthening your knowledge of Earth system science, and then helping you understand how to use that resource within your classroom. So please do uh, tweet in your questions or send your questions in via the uh, comment box, and we'll interrupt from time to time to take those questions. All right, Eugene, we'll turn things over to you and Ellen. Okay. Well, thank you for having us. We're excited to be here. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a nice day here in California for the rest of you out there. Um, but we're going to share with you our project, which is called the Green Ninja. And so I'm going to start by, uh, well, first I'll give you just a little quick history about our project. Um, it, at least from my perspective, we have, uh, I started a few years ago with a, a project that had to do with uh, the connections between food and, and climate change. And... I ended up co-authoring a book about food and climate change uh, that was called Cool Cuisine, Taking the Bite Out of Global Warming. And as a result of that, uh, I gave lots of talks about the connection between food and climate change to kind of middle-aged audiences um, who would go to a library or bookstore and, and realized that I wanted to tell these same kind of stories to a younger audience. 
And so I went to the film and animation department here at San Jose State and pitched them the idea about what would it be like to tell climate change stories to a younger audience. And that's how the Green Ninja Project was kind of initially invented. And then I used the same resources here at San Jose State to connect with educators like Ellen, um, other people in the education department, to kind of guide our project into how to be the most effective educational tool that teachers can use, that kids can get excited about. So um, I think I'll, I'll share with you a little, a brief, very, very brief uh, kind of introduction into the Green Ninja Project. Um, and, and you can see that right now, that, uh, that we, what we do is we develop uh, films and animations um, that are served really as an engagement tool to, to get young kids interested in these topics. Um, and so in terms of the, the idea behind what we're doing is that we might have a humorous uh, animation or a live action film or something that's quirky and a teacher could use that as an engagement piece in their classroom and then uh, to teach a, an area of climate or energy literacy. And our kind of three main focuses are in areas that students can identify with and that is food, water, and energy. So um, all of these are really are important topics related to climate and energy literacy. And so our films have some themes, some of those components within them. And I'll, we're going to show you some examples in, in a couple minutes of, uh, of a, a film related to food. But the, uh, so the general idea is that students might find these videos entertaining and engaging just on their own, or they may see them through the classroom. So we have kind of formal and informal components related to both of those. The, um, our latest uh, product, which we've been working on for about a year, is called The Green Ninja Show. And, uh, and we have live action films, we have puppets, we have animations, uh, we have some uh, kind of reality TV episodes, and there's 16 of those. Uh, and we're right in the middle of The Green Ninja Show right now. We started in early November, and uh, on the screen are the episode titles of our different episodes. And then on the right are the topics. And you can see it's about food choices or water conservation or the question paper versus plastic when you go to the grocery store, which is the better one. Uh, and those are all uh, different topics that are, that are contained within the Green Ninja Show. So again, the idea is that, that students hopefully can relate to some of these things uh, and then that these can be used as, uh, as engagement tools in the classroom. With each episode, there is a video discussion guide for teachers um, with questions that teachers can ask in the classroom. Uh, and we also provide some answers or some guidance as to how to have that kind of discussion in the classroom. So the Green Ninja Show is, is live right now. It's, uh, if you go to greenninja.org, every week we have a new episode. Uh, we also try to use social media. Um, those are all of our episodes. Not only are they on our website, but they're on YouTube. Uh, we have a Facebook page, we use Twitter, um, and we may be using text messaging in the future. So again, we're, we're trying to use the type of media tools that kids find interesting and engaging. Um, so I think what we'll do is we're going to show you the first ep one, an episode, and then we're going to get some feedback from you about what you think. Um, and I think that'll be, if you haven't seen this episode, this was the first uh, episode that um, came out of the, the Green Ninja show. So while Eugene's sharing that, let me remind you, um, when Eugene says you can send in your comments or questions, go ahead and send your questions anytime. We will probably take breaks to answer groups of questions, but send in questions anytime, and that way we'll have them when we take a break to give you the answers. So Bonnie, are we ready to show the Green Ninja show, the Dr. Burrito? Okay, okay yep. Yeah. On this episode of the Green Ninja Show, Cody from Seattle, Washington asks, It seems like every decision we make affects the planet. Is there anything I should know about burritos? Cody, you've picked one of my favorite subjects. Let me consult someone who can really wrap their head around the subject. I'm Dr. Burrito. 
and this is our operating room. Burritos, although they look quite similar, they can have different ingredients and very different environmental impact. Let's compare. Two burritos, four for four. Our patients, one beef, one veggie, seem similar, but are they? Clearly the veggie burrito has a lower carbon pressure. We don't have accurate numbers yet. The beef burrito measures 3,800 grams of carbon dioxide equivalent. The veggie burrito is only 500, but I don't see a difference. We'll have to operate. Scalpel. Suction. It's fine. Rice, low. Beans, low. Cheese, a little higher. Beans, off the chart. Nurse, veggie burrito. What? My diagnosis is very clear. The beef in the burrito requires much more energy to produce, thus emitting far more carbon emissions in the atmosphere compared to the veggie breed. The prescription for a healthy planet can be a menu choice away. Let's choose wisely. Well, sink your teeth into that, everyone. Sometimes helpful decisions can be free, or in this case, frijole. What other food choices can we make to protect the planet? To learn more about planet friendly food choices, visit GreenNinja.org. So that is the first episode of our Green Ninja show. And um, the idea is that we'll have you know these different weekly episodes. Um, this one obviously is about food choices and the difference between a veggie burrito and a beef burrito and the, the carbon emissions associated with that. Um, and I thought Ellen might, might kind of walk us through like how, how we might think about using that as an engagement tool. Okay, sure, and I and again invite commentary. Most of what I'm saying is meant to uh, generate some discussion. So let's first, uh, Eugene, if you could go and show that there is a uh, a viewing guide that goes with Dr. Burrito. I wanted to make sure and make the point that each video we have a, a team of teachers who's been helping us develop learning guides that are meant to be ideas for how you might start with a Green Ninja video and then bring it into your own classroom. So in this case, uh, go ahead Eugene and point out the... Yeah, so this is the, the current issue of the, of the Green Ninja show right now. And on the right-hand side of the screen is, for educators, there's a, a discussion guide. And um, that discussion guide, as I mentioned before, has some screenshots from the video. And we use something called a frame, focus, or follow-up. So some questions that are related to framing of what's the kind of larger issue. In this case, this, is, this episode is about trash and how much trash do you throw away every day. Then there's some focus questions about why is it important to think about waste we produce. And then some follow-up, some larger general issue questions. Uh, and then we provide answers to those discussion questions so that teachers or anyone using them um, at least have some background, some kind of answers that they can use related to those questions. So every episode from the, the Green Ninja Show has um, a video discussion guide. OK. So if we go back then to the slides. I'll pick it up from there. Yeah. Of course, we all also are interested in, in seeing how this might relate to the broader picture of what's being taught and also, of course, to the standards. So we invite commentary and thinking and reflection about how, how you as classroom teachers might use this. Our, our vision is that these could be nice hooks or engagement pieces to begin discussing about various topics that the films portray. And wondering, for example, with the Dr. Burrito film we just saw, 
whether you can envision some topics or concepts that fit in with what you already teach and then expanding from there how might that connect to common core and next generation science standards so we would really like to hear your thoughts on that uh, we consider teachers in a really critical part of this team of figuring out how to hopefully make these materials as useful as they can be in, in fact, the, um, it was the, the video discussion guides were all developed by teachers that we know here in the local Bay Area. And they were the ones we, we showed them the videos and said, how could we use these in your classroom? And they, you know, so they provided the guidance and actually wrote each of those video discussion guides. So we do really value teachers' input. So with that in mind, uh, I've come up with a few sort of uh, very big picture level ideas about the standards. Of course, we're all in this together and it's going to take some time to figure out, especially the next generation science standards being relatively new, but I thought it would be helpful maybe to point out some possible connections that we could talk about. So in terms of the next generation science standards, I don't know how familiar each person is with these, but it involves disciplinary core ideas, cross-cutting concepts, and practices of science and engineering. So we are, uh, we'll point out a couple of uh, ideas with respect to each of those strands, but also want to keep in mind the Common Core English Language Arts standards, uh, the, the literacy piece that might be drawn out of using some of these materials we're discussing today especially the opportunity to analyze data and to integrate multiple types of information to synthesize ideas or to address a question and to engage in argument from evidence. Many of the Green Ninja videos do involve numbers and data that could be expanded upon to look at an issue. Okay, so this is just some high-level thinking, as I said, within the disciplinary core ideas of the next generation science standards. There are many, many uh, standards related both to climate change and to human impacts on the Earth system that we could see making connections to the Green Ninja stories. And then with the cross-cutting concepts, I just selected a handful here of cause and effect systems and models and stability and change in systems and some ideas how that might be related to uh, climate change in, in general and then again pulling out some connections with the engagement piece. So thinking again of Dr. Burrito, could we be thinking about how in cause and effect how our everyday choices might be related to observed increases in atmospheric CO2. And you see some other potential ideas there. Um, let's go to that. So for example, I always need concrete examples. So a writing prompt might be to take this or any number of other graphs that are really important to understanding CO2 emissions and the greenhouse effect and actually asking students to write a story about what this graph shows and then relating it as I said to the cause and effect um, cross-cutting concept and getting students to think about how the ideas brought out in these various episodes might relate to their everyday actions and why is that important in terms of increasing atmospheric CO2. So I'm going to finish this piece up and again hope that we can invite some discussion of a couple of resources that might serve as launching points to explore this a little further. Uh, one is a, one approach I really liked comes from the Concord uh, Institute and I think Eugene's going to bring that up to show you how it works in an interactive way. Okay. Is Eugene, did you say Eugene's bringing that up? I'm just checking because we could also go to the sites for comment. Well, oh, we'll we finish with oh, this. Go ahead and do that. that would be a good time to break. 
Yeah, this is the Concord Consortium, and what I liked about it is it starts with what you already teach and then makes some suggestions and brings up some customized resources. So, for example, suppose we choose Earth and Space Science as a core idea area, and then it invites us to select a practice and a cross-cutting concept to go with that. So go for it, Eugene. Maybe arguing from evidence and then looking at uh, energy. And it will come up with a series of ready-made lessons. These are interactives that uh, illustrate how you might uh, teach bringing together your selected core idea, practice, and cross-cutting concept. Okay. So is this a good point to cut? To brings in some conversation. Well, that looks like a really good resource. Uh, I think that would be very helpful for teachers to use right within their classrooms. And I'm yeah. looking at, um, at the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research. I think we can go there first. And while we're switching and letting you get your mic unmuted, I know that um, in Virginia, we're one of those few states that have not adopted Common Core or um, oh. NextGen. And um, that's because we have our set of standards in Virginia that is called the Standards of Learning, the SOL. And so I'm thinking while you're talking of some places where I know that this, this uh, content would fit into those. I know that in uh, third grade, fourth grade, and in sixth grade again, they teach um, or included in the curriculum is the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle. And so all of those cycles and how they are uh, interacting with the elements of the biosphere and the atmosphere you know, would be a great place to bring these items in. Yeah, I agree. The whole biogeochemical cycles is, a, is an obvious connection. So how about at IALR, um, are there any ideas out there you'd like to bring in? I was thinking um, it, it brought to my mind uh, elementary and talked about energy and how, you know, when this animal eats it, they get their energy from the grass that the cow eats. And then um, it's converted when you're eating that beef and that burrito and talking about how the energy is transferred down the chain. That's good. That's a good point. And hi, Sonia. Sonia um, hi. actually works at the Danville Science Center. So I, I didn't know you were in there. I should have introduced you as well, That's Sonia. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I was going to say, if, you know, without the context of the guide, um, the video clip was a little disconcerting to me. I'll be perfectly honest. I, I felt that it glossed over some things and so it was a little confusing to me kind of just seeing that out of any context of background going wait a minute is that going to lead to a misconception because everything I mean I'm a vegetarian so I mean the, the, you know that basic concept I'm like oh sure nobody should eat meat but I think that uh, without knowing what's in your little background piece I don't think I could have used that and then launched something without having a little uncomfortable moment with the folks here because this is a very meat based part of the country and so it just kind of left you hanging without talking about trade-offs without talking about you know so I, I wasn't exactly sure how to interpret that video and I keep pondering <laughs> and maybe your guide would help me understand that. Well, I think you raise a, a very good point, and, and you know, I mean, the goal again, as we, we've emphasized, is, is as a as a tool for developing, you know, further engagement in this topic. Um, but you know, I have to admit, we are here in the Bay Area, in the San Francisco Bay Area, developing this, and it's really good to get feedback uh, from people in other parts of the country. And some of these subjects related to climate science, as we all know, uh, can be a little bit uncomfortable, which is, which is why we try to use humor as, as a bridge to, to not be insulting and not be attacking people's lifestyle. Um, and maybe you know, it would be interesting to get your feedback on, on at some point, the discussion guide, um, because that was developed by a teacher that's based locally here as well. And maybe there would be ways 
to help guide and, and use that. We definitely don't want people to, to feel uncomfortable, although maybe when you just watch the video, you're like, gosh, what are these people on about? But I really, I really appreciate that, that feedback. What do you think, Helen? Well, I, I agree with Eugene, and one of the thoughts I've had with regard to this very thing is certainly we don't want to, in any of our teaching methods, come across the saying, your lifestyle is bad, and if only you changed it, everything would be good. <laughs> but, but rather to uh, encourage thinking. So in this context, although we certainly don't want people to feel uncomfortable or under attack, if, if there is a bit of tension, perhaps that's not a bad thing in terms of critical thinking. I agree. I think that we, as you see this, what are your thoughts, and what kind of investigation would you need to do? You know, because I think all standards, even if they aren't specifically the next generation science standards or Common Core, do involve having students look at evidence right. and, and synthesizing information to look at a tricky problem. And I think that might be one thing that could be drawn out of this discomfort or dissonance. Right. And I agree. I think that, that that dissonance is very important in getting substantive conversation. I think getting an instructor comfortable with managing dissonance is is another yes. challenge. <laughs> so and I will. It made me want to go to your website and look at your discussion guide because I thought, I wonder how they are handling this in the discussion guide. So I will go look at that. That would be very helpful. Yeah, it's actually, you raise a very important piece is that, you know, that these materials that we're developing, you know, the, the primary, primary main way is through teachers. And, and, we, and actually, Ellen has run the Bay Area Earth Science Institute for over 20 years doing teacher professional development. And so we know that, that working with teachers and, and guiding them to, to have those kind of conversations um, is a key piece of this. Uh, whether we can do this through the video discussion guide or improve that, I would be certainly interested in, in getting feedback on that. I think that's a nice way. To take care of that. <laughs> well, it's a work in progress. And one reason we were excited to be invited today is we really do want feedback. This is going to be something that will develop through discussions with people and getting different points of view and improving it to better address any potential concerns or lack of clarity. Yeah, and, and you know, since I, I co-authored a book about food and climate change, and I was doing the science piece. And I, my main author was a, a chef who's been in the food industry a long time. She always says the three most um, challenging areas, three, three things that are really tough to talk about with people you know, politics, you know, religion, and food. And so, <laughs> I feel strongly about that. Yeah, food. the food is a, you know, you'll see in some of our other episodes that are about recycling oil or about, you know, unplugging your appliances. Those are much easier. That's one of the reasons we showed this one, is that this is one of those three areas that is a little bit more challenging uh, for us to address. And, and so some extra guidance would be, would be really helpful. Indeed. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and um, Eugene, I know we were just at the American Geophysical Union Conference, and uh, many who are watching may have been as well. And uh, interesting, you should bring up the things that you can't talk about, because one of the, more than one of the speakers said that climate change is now added to that list. That many people are seeing climate change as something they're concerned about, but not something they're comfortable talking about. It's it's in the list with politics and religion and food. <laughs> so um, I think that these videos will be helpful in tying that together and, and letting this be a jumping off point that leads to conversation and bringing out those topics. Yeah, that's that's for the primary reason we're trying to use humor in this <clears throat> is that that climate change is a really difficult issue um, to talk about. In fact, sometimes we assign in our classes for our students to, during Thanksgiving, for example, to go home during Thanksgiving meal and, and bring up climate change and, and see how people react. Um, and I don't know that we know the best way to do this. And so uh, we use humor as a, as, a, as a tool to try to engage in these types of, of more challenging discussions. Okay. Well, I'd like you to talk a little bit about how the videos are made, but first, while you're thinking on that, Bill and Bob at the, um, yep, you're still there, at Lake Country Education Center, 
Do you have any comments or questions you'd like to add at this time? I think their their uh, mic is muted. Yeah, we're seeing the symbols are muted. Oh yes, they are muted. Let me get there. They go. Oh, They're yeah. getting unmuted. You're good. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> uh, we didn't have anything to offer here beyond what the, the the lady at the IALR suggested. My first thought when I saw the video <laughs> was the same as hers. Uh, we live in a uh, an area that does uh, raise a tremendous amount of cattle. Uh, so cattle farming is very popular around here. So. Um, I don't know if a disclaimer or something, maybe something, a uh, comment or something at the beginning of the show might loose, lessen that impact. Uh, on the other hand, Eugene and Ellen, both of you suggested that the, the opening of minds and, and embracing new ideas is important, and I think so too. So it's a catch-22 almost. Well, uh, it is, yeah. Uh, I do have one question for you that is sort of unrelated, and that is, uh, who is the Green Ninja? <laughs> Well, that's a, that's a good question. So, um, you know, and I'll, uh, going back to Bonnie's question about how is this created, I think it kind of feeds into that. Um, you know, we're here at a university, and so the creators of Green Ninja Films are our students primarily, our San Jose State film students and animation students, um, under the guidance of, of faculty mentors. Uh, and, you know, they trying to tell an interesting story. We're trying to, to tell a science story and also to have this to be useful for educators. Um, and so it took us a, a long, some of these animations uh, take a long time and a lot of work, a lot of student hours, thousands actually of hours of student work. Um, and so you'll see the Green Ninja in different incarnations. Sometimes it looks a little different than others. Uh, and so our goal is that everyone could be a Green Ninja. And in fact, we had um, 70 student films uh, participate in the Green Ninja Film Festival and kids were acting out the Green Ninja themselves. I would just add that Eugene's referring to middle and high school children Thank you. who yeah. made films, and that, that was one of the more interesting things we've learned. Yeah, so our goal is that there isn't, uh, so this new kind of package of having the show with an intro and an outro and then something happening in the interior, um, we're, we're trying to distance from one particular character, but more of a mindset and that everyone can, can be involved in, in making um, you know, green choices. And on our website, we have this part about what it is to be a green ninja. And that is someone who understands climate science and is, is comfortable with data and numbers and is guided by the science that goes underneath all of this. Well, I, th I think you picked a good, uh, a good image for that because the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were already chosen. That's right. <laughs> we couldn't go there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Eugene, can you highlight some of the other videos? Because I know there are, are several other videos that you have as well. And while you're going to that shot, um, I want to go back to the point that these were made by middle and high school students, which is phenomenal for several reasons. Just first of all, to give them the autonomy and the responsibility of working on a project like this is really wonderful. And uh, as science educators, we know also that teaching the content of science is only half the battle. Until we've engaged their affective domain and gotten into the paradigm under which they operate on a daily basis, we haven't really changed their uh, learning pattern and really educated them. That's the way that, that's the pattern that needs to be followed to bring in true learning and, and acquiring and assimilating new information. So allowing them to do this through the acting and through uh, uh, engaging the affective domain is a really important part of what you're doing as well. Correct? Yeah, definitely. I thought Ellen might show us. We just wanted to mention to our to our teachers one additional resource. And right, very very quickly, and then what we had planned to do another video to show. Okay. So I just wanted to mention that one one way that these resources will be used <laughs> is with an upcoming online uh, module for teachers. It's meant to be self-paced self-paced uh, self and offer an opportunity for San Jose State credit if so desired. So this is going to use climate change as a context for the broader ideas of sustainability. And you can see here that it'll be of five pieces, the middle piece being the climate change uh, to help illustrate some of these broader ideas and then helping teachers, you can see in that final uh, segment to bring some of these ideas into their classroom teaching. 
Uh, we have this. And then I was just going to say that this online module will be piloted in the spring and we'll be using teacher feedback hopefully to improve it and at that point we'll make it available to any teacher anywhere who might like to earn a unit of credit through going through this self-paced module. So that'll be another way that we're putting together the materials and offering it by an avenue that might bring some formal university credit to teachers. We, we certainly recognize that these topics are, are novel and new for, for many teachers and challenging, but um, it seems a, a, a great way to integrate um, language arts and math and science around a particular theme that's is so pretty important around. Mm -hmm. So should we show another video? Sure. I think that's a great idea. And while you're lining that up, I will say too, um, you know, here in this, we're, we live near Smithfield Packaging, so I can understand the issue of, of the meat versus non-meat, but I think that's really good. You don't want to not engage that community in those conversations as well. You know, so uh, this is a good way to do that. Okay, looks like you're ready with a new video. We're ready. This one is called uh, For Goodness Rake. <laughs> It's here, my brand new leaf blower. Say, what you doing, mister? I am king of this front yard. Let no man question my sovereignty. Not today. Why don't you make like a tree? Very different from the first one, huh? Very different topic, yes. And different approach as well, yeah, with the cartoon Green Ninja, yeah. So our, our goal in that one was really to help people differentiate between uh, climate change pollution, carbon dioxide, which is invisible, and air pollution, which is the visible kind of things we can see. And um, that was one of the main primary uh, learning goals associated with that film that you, you wouldn't necessarily get from watching that film, but that that was one of the things we're trying to get at there. Very neat. Okay. So can you show us some of the teacher resources in there? Because I know you have a complete guide um, that goes with each one of these. 
And I think it might be good to look at that. I also want to make sure we look at the um, resources you have for strengthening teachers' content knowledge. But I don't mean to give you two things at once. I just want to let you know where my train of thought's going. <laughs> yeah, so um, actually that, that film uh, hasn't come out yet in the Green Ninja show. I think it's uh, in early mm -hmm. January. So um, all the, uh, the content, if there's a video like this one, which is um, called Fatal a Trash Can, then there'll be an educator guide and then a behind the scenes guide. But um, there is a, so our website is kind of devoted into two sections. So this is more of the kid friendly part. So there's um, watch the show, there's an episode guide, some behind the scenes photos, uh, the film festival we just had. Um, and then become a green ninja, which talks about, you know, what is it like to be a green ninja, you know, and, and, and what we're thinking is that the people that want to emulate this are interested in data, they're interested in numbers and the science and, and really trying to understand things. Um, and, but on the other side, uh, there's an educator page that is devoted primarily to teachers and to helping teachers kind of navigate this challenging uh, climate science area. And one of those pieces is called the Green Ninja Academy. And so in the Green Ninja Academy, um, you can, there's uh, a variety of videos and text-based text content that um, teachers can use. Um, this is the climate science overview. just has a whole bunch of different topics, the difference between weather and climate or global warming and climate change. I think there's 20 different topics that are covered there. Um, and then there's a series of videos. Some of those videos will go into uh, Ellen's sustainability course, um, but uh, question and answer that uh, one of my grad students produced, which is, uh, I think, questions that many people come across, like, how can there be global warming when last year was so cold? Or why do scientists think climate change is being caused by humans? And, you know, it's a fairly in-depth, kind of high-level um, look at that, but told for a general audience, but using data and numbers and, and the, the kind of tools that, that scientists are using. Um, so was there a question I about this? Well, I wanted to make sure that, I, from my own perspective, I wanted to make sure that uh, we were showing where the resources are and what the resources really look like. So that was where I was asking the question myself. Um, does anyone at IALR or over at the um, Lake Country Distance Education Center want a question or comment? Uh, no questions here in specific. All right, thanks. Yeah, we, we would welcome feedback about the, um, you know, what, what kind of, and I'd be curious to know, what kind of resources do you think teachers need um, to start using these, teaching these topics in their classroom? And outside of a formal professional development environment, which is what we do, you know, for five days in the summer or on weekends, uh, what could we do on, in an online environment to reach a larger group of audience? Um, that, I mean, that's kind of our goal between behind having this part of the Green Ninja site being devoted to teachers. But is there additional, what kind of additional resources could we develop to help teachers bring these topics into the classroom? And to help them with any content, science content questions, because I think for many teachers they haven't had an opportunity to study this much in their own education. Right, so that's a good segue. Uh, Ellen, to the other part of your site that I'd like to highlight, because that is um, a huge disconnect. Climate science is now being included in curriculums more deliberately and at younger ages. So teaching about the atmosphere and about changes in the atmosphere, whether it's normal changes like the greenhouse effect or excessive heating, that's now taught sometimes in third grade, fifth grade, and typically those teachers do not have a very in-depth science background, and that's not to say no one does, but in general the elementary teacher is teaching a lot of different subjects and so is not an expert on any one of those. So I believe there are resources on your site specifically devoted to strengthening science content knowledge, correct? Well, I think that some of the things that Eugene just highlighted are that area. Yeah, our, you know, our goal, um, going back to like the climate science overview is, um, and I have to admit, I, I, some of this content was from the book that we, we published, Cool Cuisine, which was 
uh, relatively short pieces um, that the layperson could could look at. In this case, there's no there's no uh, picture there, but just some text to try to help people navigate. Which would be a question that I would ask: Is do you understand the difference between weather and climate? Or, and, and so we are trying to provide materials at different levels, especially at the entry level, uh, both text space and, and some video. Although I have to admit, our, our video content for the entry level is, is a little bit um, more sparse than the kind of higher level, uh, where a teacher might already understand some content about. Right. Okay. And there are some videos, like 10-minute videos. Um, are they for Ellen's course? I know Ellen had uh, highlighted some of those in some of our conversations. I will be drawing from this collection for the course. And yeah, I was going to just ask you, Jane, to bring up some of the top, you know, some of the titles. I, I will be using these. Uh, the idea for the online course is we have, we'll have a series of readings and videos and so on that help teachers to grasp the content and then we'll have them engage in activities that refers back to that content. So the okay. idea would be that some subset of these will be used as sort of a launching point for the content, science, climate science understanding, and then leading them to how can they use this in the classroom, but definitely including some opportunity to improve their own understanding of the science. Right. I like that. And, and maybe could you click on one of those and open it um, so we can see. I think this would be a great place for teachers to go when they need to know about how things work. Yes, so, that's our hope. Yeah. So, you know, when you get to that point in your curriculum and you know you need to teach on Earth's energy budget, and for a lot of teachers, all they have is what's in the teacher edition of the student textbook. And that's so right. to know about resources that are available to them where they can strengthen their content knowledge is a really helpful piece. So this looks like a great place on your site where they could go and learn about specific bits of content. And I think also there are some guides that your students hope you develop that uh, it shows where in each of these videos a given topic is discussed so that it would be easy for the viewer to go right to the place that they, they feel uncomfortable with in terms of content. Also the opportunity to look again at things that might be more complicated. But uh, there will there is a guide that shows uh, where particular topics are addressed within each video. Okay, and that's that great. Mm -hmm. That yeah, sounds great. Yeah, that, that is our goal. And, and again, if, if uh, educators and teachers have some feedback for particular topics they would be interested in or a format that would be helpful for them, we're super interested in this. You know, we, we're here in a university, but we're, we're really interested in feedback from teachers as to how can we best um, use uh, some new media tools and videos um, to, to en enhance teacher understanding of these topics and ultimately their ability to to include these topics in the classroom. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. So Sonia, um, out at IALR, did you see some topics there that you know are part of the Virginia curriculum? Hey, Bonnie. I, I, many of them, I think, are relevant. One thing that came to mind when I was looking at that is I wondered if Eugene and Ellen didn't have a network of folks regionally around the country that might also be willing to be a resource. So people you could contact in your area. So if mm. someone wanted to do a science cafe, if someone wanted to have a speaker for a group of high school students, do you are, are you in a position to be a clearinghouse for that sort of thing um, through your website? You know, folks you could discuss in your area. Well, I, I would imagine so, uh, between the fact that I'm not a climate scientist by any stretch, but I work with a lot of people who do work with climate scientists from an educational perspective, but, but Eugene knows a lot of people doing the science, I would imagine, nationwide. Yeah, it's a, it's a great idea. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's an important point you raise, is that many times 
that people want to talk to someone. They want to interact with, with another person who, who has some content knowledge. That's why I really enjoyed when Ellen is initially invited me to come and talk to, to teachers during a workshop because it is an, an opportunity and usually the questions just keep coming and keep yes. coming about, oh, what about this or what about that? Um, and, and I think you bring up an interesting idea of how to further engage teachers around this topic, like through a science cafe, um, or even a Google Hangout, like kind of like we're doing here. Um, I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah, I like it. Cool. Yeah. I also think that's something, oh, so I'm sorry, Sonia, did you have another question or comment? No, 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 I was just good. saying thank you. <laughs> You're good. You're good. I just didn't want to cut you off if you did. Well, I also think that's something that um, we sort of do at NASA, and you're making me think you're getting my wheels turning now, and it's actually a wonderful segue into introducing Marilee Colin Robles as well. Um, but, you know, we do connect teachers uh, as we do our workshops, and one of the things we do through the DLN is when we do workshops, we're usually connecting teachers from a wide region across the country and it's been very interesting for them to be able to share information with people from very different regions than their own. So we are somewhat doing that uh, with the Digital Learning Network and with Google Hangouts and the like, um, but we can certainly be more intentional about that. So I'm really glad you brought that up as well, Sonia. So with that, I'm going to switch gears here and introduce, if you weren't with us last month, or if you were, then reintroduce you to Marile Colin Robles. So hello everybody, I'm ah. so glad to have you back. And like Bonnie is saying, uh, we do that a lot, but it's something that we should do a little bit more, especially that both Bonnie and I's background is really into, would, would be a great mesh um, between the education experience and the climate science experience that we both have in common. So something that uh, we want to present is uh, a new app that just came out. You know, in the classrooms, we're trying to increase the use of technology. So NASA just put out uh, images of change. So it's also web-based, but I want to point out the iPad use. And it's a great way to integrate something that we were discussing the first session about the importance of having an overview or that satellite view and also the ground view, right, to better understand the climate. So let's go a little bit into the iPad app. Okay, so then this is the app right here. And if you notice, uh, it shows the, the uh, image before and after. Okay, so here's the image of Muir Glacier in Alaska in 1941. Okay, and then there's a slider that you can just slide around and look at how it looks in 2004. Okay, now you can put that slider right in between. Now there's some options here in the bottom where you can have both pictures side by side or you can have you can switch back and forth and have the option of clicking on the side. Okay. So it's really interesting to get we were talking about creating that discussion right with the videos of Green Ninja. So this is now more a visual discussion, more of what has changed, right? Now if we go up to the top, we can see all the different places that we have data from or images, right? We have the top picks, which is some of them um, we were looking at the uh, glacier in Alaska. There's more recent, so these are being updated as well. Cities, particular cities, let's look at one of the cities that we define. So not always is it uh, going to be something about the melting of the ice and the load. But um, you can also show change due to increase in cities. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry about that. You can show cities, most recent, human impact, ice, if we want to focus on ice and talk about the cryosphere, extreme events, so like fires, forest fires, or um, and natural causes, and then water, which is good for the water cycle. Now it also has this third option where now you can choose a location. So this is really good to integrate the geography, okay? 
So talk about different places. So these are just some ideas on how to use the app. Again, this is also on the website on the climate.nasa.gov. But I know that a lot of schools are doing their bring your own device to school, right? Because there's something that they use every day, so not why not use it at home? So this is a great new app that just came out two weeks ago about images of change. So thank you for your time. This has been the NASA moment. <laughs> and I'll turn it back to Bonnie. Before we do, do you want to go back and show them what the app itself looks like? So when they go to the app store, did you say the actual name of the app? And we'll switch back. It's images, Im, um, Earth Images. Okay. okay. So I have my own NASA section here. So it's the Earth Images. And in the, in the description for this event, this Ask Nice event, you can go to the link to learn how to download the app. And remember, everything that is NASA, it's free, so there's no charge for them. Right. All right. Thank you, Marilei. And that was your NASA moment. Each one of the Ask Nice uh, sessions will have a NASA moment in it where we'll highlight either a new NASA resource as we did today uh, or just a NASA resource in general that's related to the topic that we're uh, discussing. Um, and as Marilei said, there's no charge. I like to say they're even, it's even more important that you use them because not only are they no charge, but you actually already paid for them. Think of them as prepaid because every April 15th or 17th, wherever that falls, um, you're paying for these resources. So it is good to try and incorporate and use as many of them as you can. Okay, well, we're getting right to the top of the hour here. Um, again, I want to highlight something else that Marilei said. When we are finished, the recording of this session will be on the YouTube page, and the description that's with it will include all of the different links that we covered today. Um, and I'm thinking maybe we want to put Eugene's email in there or Ellen's or somebody's mine, somebody so that you can contact uh, if you have further questions. So we'll work out that piece, and you'll be able to contact someone by reading the description that's there. So are there any other closing questions before we um, stop the recording from either of the sites? <laughs> so from IALR. If not, we'll just, uh, and, whoops, I'm looking down there, okay. If not, we'll do just a wave of thank you. So if you have any questions, let us know before we go. All right, I'm seeing waving down there instead. Well, Eugene and Ellen, I thank you so much. This has been really wonderful to learn about a new resource and not only how you can use it in your classroom, but how you can use it to educate yourself and bring yourself um, up to speed on current science and on topics that you may not feel so strongly about um, before you go into instruction. So I hope that those watching will use this resource and contact us for further information. Thanks, Ellen and Eugene. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Okay, goodbye, everyone. We hope to hear from you uh, through email, and we hope to see you next month where we'll be highlighting uh, the GLOBE program and the GLOBE protocol for Green Up, which you can take your students outside and use, and we'll also be highlighting uh, changes that are happening, different temperature and environmental changes that are happening and affecting biodiversity. So we hope to see you next month for the Ask Nice session. Bye-bye.